In this video, I will introduce you to the equipment we are using to measure O2 exchange rates. When you arrive in the lab, your equipment will be set up roughly like this. In this video, I will not go over details of how the equipment works, as this is in your lab manual. Instead, I'm going to demonstrate to you how you will use the equipment. This is the oxygen electrode apparatus. The label diagram of this is in the lab manual. Your samples will go in the central chamber, which is called the electrode cuvette. At the bottom of the chamber is the electrode. Be careful not to touch the electrode with anything sharp. During an experiment, the chamber is almost completely sealed off from room air with the electrode plunger. The O2 electrode apparatus sits firmly on top of the stirrer. Samples must be vigorously stirred throughout the experiment. The O2 electrode is attached to the Hansatec control box. The display on the control box shows the voltage output of the electrode in millivolts. I will explain how to use the various controls in the video. The analog signal is converted to a digital signal by the Lab Pro converter. Other important equipment shown here are the light for photosynthesis measurements, the Hamilton syringe for adding small amounts of solution to the sample in the chamber after the plunger has been inserted, a modified pasture pipette. It has a silicone tip to protect the electrode when you use it to remove liquid from the cuvette. A pipette man used to add samples to the open cuvette. A squirt bottle of high quality water for rinsing the cuvette. The rest of the supplies are either self-explanatory or you will see what we use them for in the remainder of the video. Generally calibration is done once at the start of lab. Make sure there is some water in the cuvette. The exact volume is not important for this step. The left bottom switch on the control box should be set to cancel and the right top knob to one times. Record the millivolt output for air equilibrated water. Generally this should be between 500 and 600 millivolts. Add a small amount of dithionate to the cuvette water using a spatula. The millivolt reading will rapidly decrease as the dithionate consumes the O2 in the water. Wait a couple of minutes for the millivolt reading to stabilize and then record this reading. This is the reading for water containing no dissolved O2. You will use these two readings to determine the calibration for your O2 electrode as described in the lab map. Before starting an experiment, you must completely remove the solution in the cuvette. In this case, if we don't completely remove the dithionate, it will interfere with our experiment. Remove the solution using the modified pasture pipette and then refill the cuvette with water. Repeat this at least three times. To remove the last bit of water before starting your experiment, use a twisted Kim wipe to blot out the bottom of the cuvette. Note that if you are not ready to immediately add your sample, you need to leave some water in the cuvette so the electrode does not dry out. Before adding your cells or chloroplast to the cuvette, make sure they are well mixed as they tend to settle out. You want to make sure you use a consistent sample in every experiment. Now insert the cuvette plunger into the opening. Once inserted, the plunger is moved up and down using its screw. Lower the plunger until the dome is completely full of sample and the sample is pushing up into the threads of the screw. This is critical for you to get accurate measurements of O2 exchange. At this point, if you haven't already done so, on the control box, turn the lower left switch to on and turn the upper right knob to 5 times or 10 times. This will amplify the millivolt signal coming from the electrode. Your lab manual will suggest what amplification to use for the particular experiment you are doing. Generally, all experiments for photosynthesis start with the sample in the dark. Cover the cuvette with a blackout cloth, making sure to line up the hole in the cloth with the hole in the cuvette plunger. If you haven't already started the Logger Pro software, start it now by double-clicking the desktop icon. The default Logger Pro file is not the file we need. To find the right file, choose File Open and change the file type to All Files. Choose the Oxygen Electro file. In the pop-up sensor confirmation window, click the connect button. Click the green collect button to start collecting data. If the software asks if you want to append or erase the current data, choose erase. Since your sample is in the dark, you should see either a flat line or a line with a negative slope. A negative slope indicates your sample is consuming O2. To check for photosynthetic activity, remove the black cloth and turn on the light. If the cells are revolving more O2 than they are consuming, you will get a line with a positive slope. Note that the y-axis on the graph is from 0 to 1 volts. Sometimes the O2 exchange 
rates are quite rapid, and the data will quickly move outside this scale. Use the back off adjustment, the knob on the top left of the control box, to adjust the output so that it stays within 0 to 1000 millivolts. When you have completed an experiment, click the red Stop button at the top of the computer monitor. After stopping the data collection, you can use Logger Pro to determine the various rates. Click and drag over a linear portion of the first experimental condition. Then click the Regression Analysis button, and voila, Logger Pro will calculate the slope. Repeat this for all experimental conditions. When the analysis is done, print a copy of the output for each person in your group. For some experiments, you will be adding a solution directly to the cubette. To do this, we use a Hamilton syringe and a volume of 5 to 10 microliters of the added solution. Rinse the syringe at least one time with the solution you are going to add, then draw up the required volume. Place the needle all the way into the cubette plunger. Don't worry, the plunger is designed for this and you will not be able to damage the electrode. Expel the contents of the syringe and remove it from the cubette. You may need to wait a few minutes for the electrode output to stabilize. Note that you will usually get an immediate blip in the output. This blip is not a real change in the O2 output. You need to wait for this output to stabilize at its new steady state. You will know it has stabilized when you see a steady state slope. And that's it. You should be ready when you come to lab to start doing your O2 experiments.